satisfactorily say that they, uh, they, they know where their sovereignty ends and that the Chinese Communist Party will respect that sovereignty. Uh, that's, that's certainly true now for the people of Bhutan as well. Uh, this is what the world must come together to respond to. This increasing uh, re revisionist effort that the Chinese Communist Party is engaged in is something that President Trump has taken incredibly seriously. Uh, the United States hadn't done that in previous administrations. Uh, we respond to this in a way that we think is appropriate, and we have attempted to communicate to the Chinese leadership that we are serious about this. When I say we, it's not just the United States. We will start very shortly a dialogue with our EU friends on uh, how we collectively can respond to this challenge from the Chinese Communist Party, and I am confident. I'm confident that um, this, I, I think what's happened with the spread of this virus from Wuhan, China. I think the world has seen the true colors of the Chinese Communist Party, and I am convinced more than ever that the free peoples of the world will come to understand the threat that's presented, not only internally uh, inside of China, but importantly, that the impact that uh, General Secretary Xi has on the world. ...running out of cash, but it won't stop burning money to prove a point. As Chinese citizens suffer, Xi Jinping continues to spend big on border projects. As Chinese troops pull back in Ladakh, there is no pulling down of China's infrastructure. The PLA is in a race against India, a race to build more roads at the border. Here's a report. Cameras captured these Chinese soldiers standing on a factory with walking excavators in the background. These machines are usually used for emergency rescue operations. But a report claims that China has destroyed them on the southern Indian market terrain. Many machines are being used to speed up road building and construction work. Standing close to the disputed border with India. More than 100 Chinese trucks and equipment were reportedly spotted at this location. The signs are clear. China is speeding up construction work close to the border. Just today, India's Defense Minister Rajnath Singh inaugurated six bridges in Jammu Kashmir. They were built by the Border Roads Organization. India is spending heavily on roads, bridges and tunnels at the border. In 2014, India deployed squadrons of the Arkash surface to emphasize in the northeast to deter Chinese jets. Four years ago, Upgrades were made to all advanced landing grounds. New stations have also been built close to the line of actual control. China has become an extortionist state, and Canada and Australia are ripping into China's hostage diplomacy. China's primitive methods of abducting foreign nationals in order to achieve foreign policy goals is facing mounting criticism as both Australia and Canada have strongly condemned arbitrary detentions of their citizens in China. Meeting in India's backyard, India is all set to invite Australia to the Malabar Naval Exercise. In a strong message to China, the Quad, an informal strategic grouping consisting of the US, Japan, Australia and India is coming together in yeah. India's backyard. New Delhi has planned <laughs> to invite Australia to join Exercise Malabar, an annual joint naval exercise. Bloomberg has reported that the navies of the four countries will conduct the joint exercise at the end of this year in the Bay of Bengal. Australia could be made a permanent participant in the exercise. According to Bloomberg, India will extend a formal invitation to the Australian government next week. 
following government clearance and consultations with the other two partners, Japan and the US. More than anything, this is a major departure in India's China policy. Australia has been keen on joining this joint naval exercise for quite some time now. However, India was keeping the Australia card close to its chest until now, reportedly because of the possibility of negative reactions from Beijing, but not any longer. China has become more belligerent than ever. Every single Quad country is engaged in military and trade tensions with China. India For real. has, of course, been caught up with the Chinese in a military build-up at the line of actual control in eastern Ladakh. Japan itself has been tackling Chinese vessels that have been hovering around the country's Senkaku Islands. Tokyo itself has been more assertive about protecting its territorial waters and islands from a revisionist Beijing. As for Australia and the United States, trade tensions have been enough of an impetus to contain Chinese expansionism. Trump has realized that China is the real threat to a Washington-led free world order. For the past few years, he has been engaged in an acrimonious trade war with Beijing. Australia too wants to reduce its dependence on China, especially due to the recent events. Beijing has slapped tariffs on Australian products, barley and meat, as Australia demanded a fair inquiry into the origins of the coronavirus pandemic. And then, all the four countries are like-minded democracies with a common goal, to keep the Indo-Pacific free and open. China's salami slicing tactics in the South China Sea are, however, a threat to this common goal. Beijing's nine-dash line theory encircles 90% of the strategic waters in the South China Sea, including the international waters and maritime territory of other countries as Chinese territory. This is a direct threat to the prolific trade routes of all the four Quad members. The fact that the Quad is getting completed at a military level shows that a military build-up to hamper China's Blue Water Navy ambitions is taking place. Derek Rossman, a researcher at the Washington-based RAND Corporation and an expert in US intelligence community said it would send a significant message to China that the Quad, US, Australia, Japan and India are de facto conducting joint naval exercises even if not technically conducted under the auspices of a Quad event. It makes sense for the Quad members to have come up to this level gradually as opposed to the option of a knee-jerk reaction. Chinese expansionism in the Himalayas, the East China Sea and the South China Sea has built a strong case for the Quad to be unleashed with all its might. It is well recognized that in the interest of international peace and security, China must remain a green water navy, one that cannot exert influence beyond its littoral zone. In fact, mobilization to contain China has been already happening. The Quad countries have been becoming more and more intertwined, interlinked and interdependent. India has signed military logistics sharing pacts with the US and Australia. It is also eyeing a similar agreement with Japan. Australia and the US also cooperate in the Pacific as a part of the ANZUS Pact, formerly called the Pacific Security Treaty amongst Australia, New Zealand and the US. Japan itself shares deep military ties with the US and is now considering expanding military cooperation to include countries like India and Australia. Damn. Viewed in the background of hike in Australia's defense expenditure and Japan's ambitions to move away from constitutional pacifism, it was only a matter of time before the four countries came together on a common platform. Location of the Malabar exercise, Bay of Bengal, too, has been carefully chosen. In the event of a military escalation, Chinese warships can be easily blocked by India and Australia from entering the Indian Ocean through the Strait of Malacca. China wants to have a blue water navy like India and is looking to build the Kra Canal through Thailand to bypass Malacca. Consequently, it makes sense for the Quad to focus upon the Bay of Bengal. The US Navy is of course a behemoth with a combined deck capacity being over twice that of all other nations combined. Australia and Japan too are force multipliers that are looking at developing hypersonic missiles which will be real game changers in futuristic warfare.